All right, in section 5.3, we're going to be solving trig equations. And when you solve trig equations, you have to think back to what you did um, in algebra 2, like when you're just solving regular equations. So like, what are some main things that you do when you solve an equation? So if you have a basic algebra problem, one of the things you do is you isolate the variable. Ugh, I can't right today. That says variable. Anyway, sorry. This is a little far away, isn't it? Alright, so isolate the variable. Um, another thing you could do, um, maybe remember you used to factor, right? Alright, another thing, um, cross multiply. Alright, see if you think of something else, like specifically for like quadratics, like when something is x squared. So you take the square root. Or like if something's cubed, you take the cube root, right? And just um, you could also do something when you see a square root, you square both sides. So there's lots of things here. Um, I just was just kind of uh, naming a few little things here. All right. So let's see. So. Um, which method or tricks um, cause you to sometimes get extraneous solutions? All right, like solutions that seem like they're solutions, but they end up not working. And so I would say you know, sometimes factoring does that. Um, definitely when you square both sides. And like if you have some kind of variable in the denominator, like if you have a fraction. So if you have like some kind of um, domain issue, you know, like if you would have an equation with like x minus 5 in the denominator, then you're like, or x plus 5, you'd be like, oh, x can't be negative 5, and things like that. Okay? All right, so we're going to solve a few equations, some equations here, and um, remember what we did the other day with um, solving basic equations and looking at the unit circle because when we're all said and done we're going to look at the unit circle for the answers. All right, so here we go. So here, so now you can always like kind of like take it back to like an algebra problem, right? Um, let me see, hang on a second. So when you go back to an algebra problem and you say to yourself, okay, well, um, if I have cosine x is my x, this would be kind of similar to this problem. 5x minus 1 equals 3x. So if I was going to solve an equation like that, I would say to myself, okay, well, I'm going to get the x's on one side, the numbers on the other, and then, and then solve for x. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to take away 3x, 3 cosine x. All right, I'm going to move the 1 to the other side, so I get 2 cosine x equals uh, 1. And so I basically just get cosine x equals one half. And so this is this is the point where you go to the unit circle. And it's important also to look at the directions. I want all the answers from zero to two pi. So I want all the places where the cosine is one half. So you can think of it like this, and you know think like arc cosine on both sides. But it's a little bit more than that because you remember arc cosine when we did it. You could only answer in this category right here. Well, for these problems, you're going to go everywhere from 0 to 2 pi. So it's kind of like you're doing this, but also at the same time, a little bit more. So go back to your unit circle. 1 is a cosine 1 half, and it's here at pi over 3. A, S, T, C, so it's also right here at 5 pi over 3. So your answer is that x could be pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Okay. Now if you go graph this on the unit circle, I mean on, the, on Desmos or your calculator, um, you're going to get, let's see, it's going to look like this. I'm not sure if it's crossing at 1, but anyway, it's going to cross like right here. And then it um, kind of comes down and uh, goes down below. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, almost to 3 or so. And then it kind of comes back up a little bit like right there. And so, you know, it keeps going. It keeps repeating. But notice these answers right here, these x-intercepts. Those x-intercepts were your answers over here. So it kind of like proves your case. Okay, so those are the x-intercepts from 0 to 2 pi. All right, so same question down here, example 2. We want 3 secant squared x minus 4. So imagine you had this problem. 
3x squared minus 4 equals 0. Well, you would add 4, you would divide by 3, and then do the square root. So we're going to do the same thing. So when I move the 4 over and divide by 3, I'm going to start there. I get secant squared equals 4 thirds. Okay? And so then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I get the secant is plus or minus. The square root of 4 is 2, and I do not know the square root of 3, so there it is. Now secant, I always like to change it over. Um, secant is the reciprocal of a uh, cosine, right? So um, I'm going to say that if secant is 2 over radical 3, that means a cosine is plus or minus radical 3 over 2. Because I have cosine memorized, I don't have secants memorized. All right? So um, back to the unit circle. What is a cosine plus or minus radical 3 over 2? So it's plus or minus, so I got four answers. One, two, three, four. Okay, and we're going to answer in radians because that's what it said right here. So my x could be pi over 6, uh, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, or 11 pi over 6. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you graph this, um, I'm not going to have it perfect here, but it's going to look kind of like uh, this right here. Kind of come up and go over. Um, then it does it again over here. Yep, kind of comes like that. And then over here. And kind of comes around there and starts to go there. So, but look at your answer. There's your pi over 6. <coughs> Excuse me. There's your 5 pi over 6. There's your 7 pi over 6. And there's your 11 pi over 6. So you can see the answers that you're supposed to get. All right. And we talked in class how to graph these on Desmos. And then also you can, you basically you're graphing this original problem um, equal to y, right? And over here, you'd be graphing, you know, take away this over here, you'd say, 2 cosine minus 1 equals 0. You have to get everything on one side to be able to graph it. All right. <clears throat> so in number 3, we're going to do something similar. We're going to um, move the 1 and divide by 3, and then do the square root. So I'm going to move the 1, divide by 3, so I get tangent squared theta equals 1 third. So I'm here. And so you should be able to, you know, kind of do some of those steps in your head, right? Alright, so once you're there, you take the square root of both sides, so you get the tangent is equal to plus or minus the square root of one third, so that is um, plus or minus one over square root of three. Okay, so um, this you have to kind of like think about where does it come from. So you know this comes from having, um, let's see, one half over the square root of three over two, because I was trying to think of it, was it 30 or 60? Um, so it, it, this situation comes from having one half on top, square three over two on bottom, because then when you um, flip it up, times two over radical three, these cancel, and that's that situation. So remember the tangent was the y over the x. So this was the x, that was the y. So if you go back to your unit circle, one is radical three over two, the x value, there it is. So it's here, here, and it was plus or minus. So I'm gonna say all the same answers I just had on the last problem as well. So. We're going to do that, so we'll say that. Um, so theta, let me write those down, pi over 6. But my question's a little bit different here. It says all solutions. So pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. Now, remember for tangent that the period is pi, right? And so when you look at this, um, when you look at this equation, like when you graph it, um, you're going to get... A picture that looks like. Oh, hang on a second. Let me check something real quick. Yeah. All right. So, strangely enough, when you have tangent squared, it looks a lot like this. Again, it looks a lot like the last graph. So, it kind of looks like this and comes up. And um, over here, if you graph it, looks like that. And yeah, it's like pretty much very similar to the last graph, right? But what happens is we want to not only give the answers from 0 to pi, we want to give them like forever. It keeps going forever. Like those answers that you see here keep occurring and occurring and occurring like all the way to the right and to the left. So what we're going to do is this. We know that pi over 6 is here. Well, the period of tangent is pi. So 180 degrees later, that's where you're getting the other answer. So we're going to say our answer like this. Theta equals pi over 6 
plus pi n. So what that means is it's a pi over 6 plus every multiple of pi, and again, and again, and again after that. So what that will do is it will take this answer, and it will give me this answer, and this answer, and every answer after that 180 degrees away. It will keep going, 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 going. All right, and forward and backwards, because remember n is an integer. It could be plus or minus any multiple of pi. And then we're also going to say same thing for 5 pi over 6. Because 5 pi over 6 is over here, and 11 pi over 6 is 180 degrees away from it, so we're going to say 5 pi over 6 plus pi n. So saying it like this takes care of every possible answer for all time. All right. So here, same situation. So it's kind of a little bit more annoying when it says all solutions because you have to like do that extra work. All right, so hmm, I do notice that they have a cotangent in common. So I'm going to bring this over and factor. So cotangent, cosine squared. So this is also why you did all that um, identity work before because then um, you know to see these things. All right, so we're going to take a cotangent out and cosine squared minus 2. Okay, so um, when you factor, you set each part equal to 0. So this part, cotangent equals 0, and over here, cosine squared minus 2 equals 0. So I add 2 to both sides, I get cosine squared equals 2, do the square root of both sides, I get cosine equals plus or minus radical 2. Well, radical 2 is 1.41 and so forth. Cosine can't be bigger than 1 or smaller than negative 1. So this is too big. Remember, we can't do the inverse cosine of this. And also, I don't recognize this from a unit circle. All right. So no answer from this part. But over here, cotangent is 0. Well, remember, tangent is the y over the x. So cotangent is the x over the y. So I need a place where the x value is 0 and the y value can be anything. So x value is 0 here and here. Now, the period of cotangent is pi, so I'm going to say pi over 2 plus every pi n after that. So basically pi over 2 plus every 180 degree rotation after that, over and over and over and over, like for all times. I could go forwards or backwards. All right, so my answer for this guy over here is pi over 2 plus pi n. And we just say plus because n could be a positive or a negative integer. And so if you graph that, you would see um, it looks like this. And so you start to see the x-intercepts are the answers. So just like with algebra problems, you know, the x-intercepts, they're your solutions. All right. So back to our nice little 0 to 2 pi business here. All right. So let's look at this problem here. I got basically 2x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. All right. So sometimes write yourself a little algebra problem so that you recognize. You're like, oh, now I see. If this was an algebra problem, I would factor it, right? And depending how you factor, maybe you make your x or whatever you do, you get 2x and x. And let's see, a minus and a plus. So this factors to that. And so basically what you're going to do then is um, substitute these x's. are just going to be uh, sines. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to have 2 sine x plus 1 and then sine x minus 1. Okay, so all the algebra things you did before, you have to do them here too. Alright, so it said each part equal to 0. So over here, I'll get 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0, so I get sine x equals negative 1 half. Just like over here, we would get x equals negative 1 half, right? But our x is sine. And here I get x equals 1. So if you want to do it over here and just like take it over there and kind of cheat off of this a little bit, it's perfectly fine. Okay, so where from 0 to 2 pi does sine make ne is sine negative 1 half? So ASTC, I'm looking down here. There it is, 11 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. So I'm getting 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6 from this part. And when I sign 1, there it is right there, at 0. OK, and so notice I don't say 2 pi because it's, it doesn't include 2 pi. But here is the answer there. And look, 1, 2, 3 solutions. And we got three solutions. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I guess it was 2 pi there. Hmm, why wasn't it at 0 there? Hmm, 1, 2, 3, 4. Hmm. 
Well, what is sign one? Oh, pfft, I'm sorry. I'm so silly. You're probably saying, oh, you're wrong. Sign is a Y value, so I should be saying this guy up here, pi over two, not zero. Duh. Oops. All right, so there you go. There's your three answers. That makes sense. So that wasn't, that isn't two pi, actually. That's something else. All right. That's 11 pi over six, probably. All right, so here we go. So this guy here. Now, I got sine squared and cosine. These don't go together, but I can fix this. I can't turn cosine into anything, but I can use my little rules here, which is also why we did our identities. I can turn sine squared into some kind of cosine squared, and that'll create like a situation like we had up here where I could probably factor. So let's make that transformation. So I got two, one minus cosine squared plus three cosine equals three. So I gotta do a little work on this before I can use it. So I got uh, two minus two cosine squared plus three cosine x equals three. So I wanna have, this is a quadratic, I wanna have it in order, so I wanna have this first, negative two cosine squared, this next, plus three cosine x, and I'll take away three, so that'll be a negative one. Now, if you were gonna go to factor something, like say this one, you wouldn't want the front to be negative, right? So you'd want the front to be positive. So I am going to change all the signs. Make this two cosine squared minus three cosine x, plus one, right? And so now if you want to, what you can go do is um, you can go and um, make it into an algebra problem, right? So you get two x squared minus three x plus one. And so that way you can go and factor that and just like you know the algebra problems that you're used to and then you can go plug in your sine, your cosines or whatever. So if you factor that, you know, multiply your two over, make your x or however you like to factor, so I'd get 2x and both minuses, and that's what would work. Because so we got negative 2x and negative 1x, like negative 3 in the middle. So I'm going to basically get down here that x is 1 half, and here x is 1. So very similar to the last one. So when I go over here, I kind of know my answers. I mean, I should write my work, but 2 cosine x minus 1. I got cosine x minus 1 here. But basically when I'm done, I'm going to get cosine equals 1 half, like I got over here. And over there, I'm going to get cosine equals 1. So back to your unit circle, 1 is cosine 1 half. So you think A, S, T, C. So I'm looking here and here. And that's going to be at 60 degree angles. So I need pi over 3. And, uh-oh, it says all solutions. So the period of cosine is uh, 2 pi. So I'm going to say pi over 3 plus every 2 pi after that. Then I'm also going to say... Down here it was 5 pi over 3, so 5 pi over 3, plus every 2 pi after that. And when is cosine equal to 1? Well, that happens at 0 degrees, so I will also say my third answer is 0 plus 2 pi n, or basically just 2 pi n, because we don't need the 0 there. All right, so um, I graph this one a little bit differently. I basically graph this and that. So you see my equation here, y equals 3. And this one here is y equals the 2 sine squared x plus 3 cosine x, all right? So I graphed the original, so I know that I didn't, if I didn't make a mistake, like in here, then I would be fine. So if I look, look, they're crossing at 0. There's one of my answers. They're crossing right here. That's my pi over 3. And they don't cross again till over here at 5 pi over 3. And if you're on, um, what's it called, Desmos, then of course you could see those things really easy. All right, okay, so now we come to a problem. I got cosine plus one equals sine. And so this one's really horrible because like there's nothing to do really. Like I can't, I don't have um, like a Pythagorean identity. I don't have any squares there. So sometimes I choose to create one myself. And so this is really dangerous, but I have to square both sides because like there's nothing I can do with that. I can't turn sine and cosine into each other, but once they're squared, then I can, I can, I can turn them into each other with my Pythagorean identity. So let's see what we got. So I'm gonna get cosine squared. And remember for the middle term, I multiply cosine times one times two. So it'd be plus two cosine and then one squared. 
or you know you're welcome to write this out twice and foil it out over here I just get equals sine squared all right so from here I'm going to change my sine squared into a cosine squared using my Pythagorean identity because I can't get rid of this cosine here I'm locked into that so I want to change this into a cosine squared and I don't want to change this at all so I need to replace sine squared sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared so this is going to get replaced with 1 minus cosine squared <clears throat> right so this is what the identities were kind of getting you ready for we don't just sit there and like solve identities and, and stuff it was to prepare you for like you had to use them in um, solving equations and also to simplify things sometimes when you need to all right so let's combine like terms let's bring this cosine squared over here so I have two cosine squareds let's see so that's gone um, plus two cosine and then oh these ones cancel out okay so let's do some factoring I'm gonna take out a two and a cosine which is gonna leave me with a cosine plus one okay so I get cosine equals zero and from this one I get cosine equals negative one if I set them both equal to zero so when is cosine zero that happens at pi over two and this does say from 0 to pi, so I'll have to put the plus 2 pi in. So cosine is 0 at pi over 2 and also at 3 pi over 2. And then cosine is negative 1 at uh, pi. And there we go. And so I did this again with the one equation and the other graph together. So we're looking for intersections. So look, they're intersecting right here. Right here, there's my pi. So pi over 2 is there. Uh, pi is there, you know, 3 pi over 2, they must be coming back together over here, but I just don't have it on there, because that's pi, that's pi over 2, that's pi, mm, 3 pi over 2, no, you know what, that's not it. When you square both sides of something, um, you create like a false situation, because when you square something that's negative, it turns positive. So when you square both sides, this is one of those times we need to go back and check our answers. We can check them using the graph. So I can see that only pi over 2 and pi are working for me. So 3 pi over 2 is an extraneous solution, and let's go ahead and see why. If I plug 3 pi over 2 in here, the cosine at 3 pi over 2 is 0, and 0 plus 1 on that side. Over here, the sine at 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So look at that. 1 equals negative 1. It does not. So that was an extraneous solution that I got because when you square both sides, they seem like they're the same. So yeah, graph is a good check, right? So anyway, squaring both sides, dangerous. Um, you gotta go check your answers. All right, almost done here. Got a few more. All right, so find all the solutions here. So it's gonna be plus two pi or pi n, we'll see what. All right, so uh, cotangent squared, cosecant, can't deal with those together. I can't factor them. I can't change cosecant, but I can change cotangent squared to something. So cotangent squared is cosecant squared minus 1. That's the route to go. So I got 3 cosecant squared minus 1. Oops, that's an x, not a theta. Minus 5 cosecant, and then equals negative 1. All right, so let's multiply it out. I get 3 cosecant squared minus 3 minus 5 cosecant equals negative 1. So let's, it's quadratic. Let's put it in order. 3 cosecant squared uh, minus 5 cosecant. And minus 3 plus 1 is going to be a minus 2. All right, so again, you know, make this into an algebra problem. 3x squared minus 5x minus 2. Factor it. And you know, you could get one that's a quadratic formula, but I'm not gonna give you one that you need a quadratic formula for. So you'll always be able to factor it, or you should. So three X and X, if you factor this, you get a two and a one here, a minus and a plus. So um, it's easy to see then that X would be equal to negative one third here, and over here, X is equal to two. So you know your X's are standing for cosecants, so you can take that work and just kind of transform it. You get cosecant is equal to negative one third. And then from the other one, you will get uh, cosecant is equal to 2, all right? So um, cosecant, we don't like cosecant because I don't have those memorized. So I would get that sine is equal to negative 3 if I flip that. And over here, sine is equal to 1 half. All right, sine x. 
sine can't be negative 3. So that is a no solution, but sine can be 1 half. So we're looking for all solutions here. So when is sine 1 half? I'm going to say pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. And we're going to put plus 2 pi n. So my answer is pi over 6 plus 2 pi n and 5 pi over 6 uh, plus 2 pi n. And the graph would prove it. All right. Let's see. Only three more. All right. So here we go. So notice that um, this problem, in these next two problems, we start to have something inside the function, the tangent function, and inside the cosine function there. And over here, no, not there. But anyway, um, that's going to be different. You can't get to that. So let me show you what you have to do. So notice, um, I only see one answer happening on the graph over there. Um, so let's go for it. We're going to get tangent x over 2 minus 3. All right, so we're going to add 3, and I'm going to divide by 3. I'm going to isolate this tangent. So tangent x over 2, add 3, divide by 3, I get 1. So at this point, you're locked into doing the arc tangent. When is a tangent equal to 1? So you say to yourself, well, tangents equal to 1 here and here. So that is um, pi over 4 that happens, and that also happens at 5 pi over 4. But remember, what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, pi over 4 plus pi n. It happens every 180 degrees, so that's what we're doing with this all solutions here. So instead of saying x equals, I'll have to say x over 2. So x over 2 equals pi over 4 plus pi n. And at this point is where you're going to get rid of the 2. You are going to multiply everything by 2 because this is a period change right here. And so you're going to have to do that to your whole answer as well to get rid of the 2. So x equals, I multiply 2 times pi over 4, it becomes pi over 2. And 2 times pi over n becomes 2 pi n. And there you go. So you can see this answer is occurring every 2 pi. All right, so remember, you can't touch that until the end. All right, so here, same idea. Oh boy, we got lots of answers here. Leesh. Okay, so again, can't touch that yet. So I got 2 cosine squared, 2 theta, uh, minus 1 equals 0. So I'm going to uh, add 1, divide by 2. So I got cosine squared equals 1 half. So I take the square root of both sides to get rid of my square. So cosine 2 theta equals the square root of 1 half would be 1 over radical 2 plus or minus. And if you rationalize that times radical 2, radical 2, you get radical 2 over 2. So we know that's some 45 degrees areas. So basically what I get here is that 2 theta equals um, pi over 4, right? Because pi over 4 is the place where we have radical 2 over 2. And remember, it's plus or minus. So, I'm going to approach this by doing this. Pi over 4 plus 2 pi n. I know we don't have to do that for this, but I want to be able to get all the answers. Um, then I have 2 theta, because I need all four quadrants. 2 theta, um, pi over 4, we need 3 pi over 4. Um, 5 pi over 4. And um, 7 pi over 4. Those are the four places where I get square root 2 over 2, plus or minus. All right, because look, there's supposed to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 answers. I only have 4. All right, so divide everything by 2. So I get theta equals pi over 8. So when I divide by 2, it's like multiplying by 1 half. Plus divide by 2, I get pi n. This one becomes theta equals 3 pi over 8 plus pi n. This one becomes um, 5 pi over 8 plus pi n. And this guy over here becomes 7 pi over 8 plus pi n. All right, so let's make a list of our answers. Remember, we need, what do we say, 8? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All right, so let's get my pi over 8. And it says plus pi n. So what's pi over 8 plus pi? Pi over 8 plus, so 1 eighth plus 8 eighths is 9 eighths. So that's my next answer. So 9 pi over 8. All right. If I add 8 eighths again, 
8 eighths plus 9 eighths would be 17 eighths, and 17 eighths is bigger than 2. I don't want to go past 2 pi. So there's those two answers coming from this part. All right, so let's do 3 pi over 8. And let's add pi. So let's add 8 eighths. So 3 eighths plus 8 eighths is 11 eighths. If I add another one to try to keep going, 11 eighths plus 8 eighths, that's too big. It's over 16 eighths. It's over 2 pi. All right. So the sky is 5 pi over 8. Oops. 5 pi over 8 plus 8 eighths would be uh, 13. And the last one, last two, 7 pi over 8. 7 plus 8 eighths would be um, 15 eighths. So that's how you're going to get all eight of your answers right there. Oof, I wish it had said all solutions because I would just left it like this right here. So that's how we got those. So those are, that's your most complicated. All right, and the last one. We made it. All right, all solutions to this. So um, I noticed they have a tangent in common, so we're going to factor out a tangent. And that leaves me with a tangent minus 3. All right. Uh, yep. All right, so here, tangent equals 0. And over here, tangent equals 3. All right, so I did this one because in this one, you have to use your calculator. So when does, and it says all solutions. Um, when does tangent equal 0? Tangent's the y over the x, so I need the y value to be 0. So um, it happens here and here, so it's pi apart. So 0 plus pi n. So my first answer coming from here is 0 plus pi n, or basically just x equals pi n. There is one part. Now this guy, I am going to have to use my calculator. So I don't have my calculator handy, but I'm basically going to have to do the inverse tangent of 3. Like, I don't know when the tangent is 3, so we're going to have to use our calculator to get that. So if I can find my Desmos app. Oh, dear, oh, dear, where is that thing? Okay. Okay. So I will have to do the, the inverse cot or inverse tangent of 3. Of 3. And I do not understand that. So I would think I would like my settings. What? I thought I could do that. Hang on. A oh, darn it. Hmm. Hang on a second. Inverse tangent of 3. I thought I could put my settings to being... How do I change that? All right, hang on a second. Oh, the wrench, that's what it is, to degrees. All right, so 71 degrees. Just so you can understand what's going on, we're going to change it back. So 71.5 degree, 0.6 degrees plus every 180 past that. But we will go ahead and leave it in radians because that's what it was. So I'm going to basically say 1.25. So x equals 1.25 plus pi n, every pi n after that. And so um, there's your pi, right? And then right there, and then it happens again over here. And then here is your 1.25, and then every pi after that. So you see them there. But every once in a while, you've got to use your calculator when you don't recognize a problem or an answer. All right, that's it. Bye-bye.